When people talk about mom and pop businesses, they're usually thinking about places like candy stores and restaurants, not cable TV systems. It's all glass cylindrical face picture tube gives you a full 245 square inch picture. Why? Because everyone knows the cable TV industry is dominated by gigantic corporations such as Time Warner and MSNBC parent company Comcast, each serving many millions of subscribers. What is Comcast? 20-some million, so that's big. What most of us don't know about cable TV is that there are well over 800 micro-cable companies across the country, like Buford Media Group, here in Tyler, Texas. It's owned and operated by one man, Ben Hooks. David, you've gone through about every evolution of Buford. Like many small business owners, Ben takes great pride in his small-scale East Texas-based business. I can't own a great big company. All right, but I have the same entrepreneurial spirit in it. I own it, I control it. While the revenues for mom and pops like his are a small fraction of the billions earned by the companies everyone's heard of, the direct connection between his subscribers and his staff is often much more personal. We principally have served smaller uh, systems. We've generally been in this kind of market for years and years and years. So It's our expertise, smaller systems. Customers depend on, on the service that we give them. Greg Berthot is Ben's area manager. He knows many of the system subscribers in towns like Cooper, Texas, and he oversees the work of each service technician. He shows up at their house, and they get to know him. Some of them even feed him, so he's part of the community, yes. Buford Media, which is known to its customers as Alliance Communications, serves a tiny set of just over 7,000 subscribers. And that's after adding together 38 separate systems spread across six different states. How does he manage? How does Ben and others like him compete with the big guys who have the clout to offer better rates and more services? The smaller guy has more trouble because we don't have the customer base to negotiate as favorable rates as a larger company. The answer may surprise you because it turns out those behemoths don't worry him at all. In fact, his subscribers and his equipment are both mostly leftovers, which the bigger companies cast off in the first place. A lot of the systems that, that we currently own, it, 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 prior to our ownership at one point, came from a Cox or a Time Warner or, you know, those kind of large companies. A small town of Cooper, I mean, is not profitable for them. And roughly four years ago, Time Warner sold off its system in Cooper with its tiny customer base of 200 subscribers. We had more trouble getting the local broadcast signals out in the rural system. It's not fit within their business plan, and they've typically been spinning these off. Two years later, Ben bought the Cooper system for a song. And so far, he's strung together dozens of other leftover systems like it, planning to upgrade them to broadband in order to boost his profits. Hey, I bought them pretty inexpensively. And I said, wow, this is an opportunity to add what does make money is internet, telephone, you know, all the other things we brought back. He's improved these systems largely by using refurbished equipment with cast offs also from the big players. It works like this the major operator needed more bandwidth, upgraded their plant. That equipment then comes back into the market, and when we buy that at a considerably lower price, and it meets all our needs. While Ben's not concerned about being crushed by the competition, he is certainly concerned about being crushed by government regulations, which tend to favor big city systems and telcos at the expense of small rural operations like his. The government stepped in and, and set up those rules for the larger companies, but it is really causing havoc with uh, the small operators, they are paying a higher price for the program. From retransmission rates to digital mandates and government subsidies, Ben says the rules made in Washington tend to work better for the big guys than the little ones. The recent ruling out of the FCC is to extend grant money and money to telephone companies to come in and overbuild me. Now, how am I going to compete with the government? As far back as 1992, Ben and his fellow small-scale cable operators recognized the need for their part of the industry to be heard. Back then, Ben often traveled to Washington himself to make his case. I tirelessly went to Washington, and most of the folks are very polite and courteous. Well, all of a sudden, we found ourselves all these rules are getting passed, 
coming down to us and no one's really representing us. That was the start of a lobbying effort on behalf of small-scale operators. Today, it's known as the American Cable Association. Washington doesn't mean it, but they never take quite the time to fully understand Well, here's where the problem is, and they're focused on a big company. While the little guys still have big issues, through their lobbyists, they're starting to level the playing field. But we have a voice. We're highly respected now. It's not so much what you get. It's what happens to you if you don't have the representation.